Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Pei, Daf 80 of Masech the Yuvomis, friends. Uh, yo, Daf 80, man. That's like a whole thing. <laughs> We've done 80 Daf of freaking like the hardest Masech in Shas. That ain't bad. It's getting hot in here. Yeah, we're, we're doing good. We're, we're moving along. We're moving through this Masech. We only got like 40 Daf left. A little more than my said, but... Yeah, I guess we're two thirds of the way through. Not bad. Oh man, it's oh, it's hot in here. Oh man, what should I do? I think I'm just gonna suck it up. I'm just gonna deal with it. I think. All right. Uh, I think I'll do. Maybe I'll complain a little bit about it. All right. Let's see. All right, friends. Uh, can tell what what uh, Pay talks about. Wait one second. No, it's a little hot. Now. Oh, what do I do? Oh man. All right. Um. Friends, who can tell me what Daf uh, Pei talks about? Well, it talks about Srises and Ilonises. Go figure. Castrados and Castratas. Castrados and Castratas. Friends, if I, if I translate I, a Sris as a Castrato and Ilonis as a Castrata, would that work for you? Let's try it. It's like, what, what else do we have like that? A fellow and a fella. Whatever. Castrato and, and a castrata. <laughs> Although, would that be like, maybe we should, maybe castrato and castrata, maybe they sound too similar. Maybe a castratala. Yeah, maybe that's better. Castrato and a castratala. So, castrato is boy, castratala is girl. How's that? A castratala. <laughs> uh, um, fine. Castratala. <laughs> So we had a Mishnah yesterday, and we saw two opinions. We had the opinion of Rabbi Yoshua, as explained by Rabbi Akiva, and the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer's opinion was that a um, srischama is able to uh, do chalitza, right? Like a srischama is somebody who was born as a as a as a castrato, um, and a um, a Sris Adam is a fellow who becomes a castrato later in life. So he wasn't born a castrato. So now, Rabbi Yezer said, so when you have a Sris Chama, so the Sris Chama is able to do Chalitza because, um, because it's possible to get healed, right? Somebody who who's, was born a castrato, maybe they could become healed. But a Sris Adam, who uh, was born a non castrato and became a castrato, so then there's no solution there. You can't uncastrato. So um, in that case, he'd be unable to do chal- uh, chalitza. So now, Uriminu. We have a kasha on Rabbi Yezer. What's the kasha? Ben esim shonin. You have a fellow, as opposed to a fellow. You have a fellow. You have a fellow who is 20 years old. Vlehevishtei Cyrus. He still doesn't have two pubic hairs. He's 20 years old. Doesn't have two pubic hairs. Yaviru Rayashu ben esim. So that they, if they bring a proof that he's in fact 20 years old, Vuasaris, and he is showing, uh, signs of being a castrato, Locholetz Velo Miabim, so he would not do Chalitza, he would not do Yibum, um, because he, he's a castrato. Bas Esim Velo Evia Shte Cyrus, if you have a girl who is 20 years old, and she also, she does not yet She's 20 years old. She does not yet have two pubic hairs. Nebuiraya shehi basesim. So they bring a proof that she is in fact 20 years old. Via ailonis. And she is showing signs that she is a kestradala. Lo choletzis vlo misyabemis. So then she does neither chalitza nor yibum. Divi basil. That is basil. Right? So it comes 20 years. And if you, either you have a fellow or a fella. And they haven't yet uh, produced two pubic hairs. So then, uh, depending on the gender, there will be either a castrato or a castratala, respectively. That is the opinion of Basilo. Um, so Beshamay says basically the same thing, except that we're talking about 18 years as opposed to 20 years. Rabbi Eliezer says Rabbi Eliezer, Hazochr Ketiv Basilo, Unikev Ketiv Beshamay, says Rabbi Eliezer that boys uh, are like Basilo, that it's 20 years and Girls are like Beshamai, that it is 18 years. That a, a woman, right, girls mature faster than boys. So therefore, if by 18 years old, she still does not have 
two pubic hairs. She is a castradula, whereas a boy, uh, we wait until 20 years old, and if at 20 years old, he still does not have a, a two pubic hairs, so then he is a castrato. Now, that's also the question. Who could tell me, who could explain to me what the question is? The question is thus, that Rabbi Yezer seems to be saying that, um, like, uh, I mean, he's saying that uh, by a boy, it's like Basil, that it's 20 years, but by a girl, it's like Beishama, that it's 18 years, but, but what about Basil? What about Beishama? What about 20 years? What about 18 years? What did Basil and Beishama say? They said that if by this time, they don't have two pubic hairs, well, then they don't do Chalitza, and they don't do Yibum. Now, Rabbi Eliezer, now this is talking about Sris Chama. This is about talking about people that were born that way. And, 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 and Rabbi Eliezer seems to be on board with, you know, Basilo for a boy, Beishamai for a girl, that, um, if they haven't produced, uh, if they're a, a castrato or a castratala, so then they would not do Yibum or Chalitza. And here we're talking about, uh, that they were born that way, right? That, 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 from the day they were born until 18 or 20, they, they didn't produce two pubic hairs. They're a castrato or a castratala, uh, respectively. So we see it's a sris chama, that they're born that way. And Rabbi Yezir seems to be saying that they would not do yibun, they would not do chalitza. Friends, you get the kasha. Om Rami bar dikule, Omar Shmuel, Chazer Bo, Rabbi Yezir says, Om bar dikule in the name of Shmuel, Rabbi Yezir changed his mind. While in our Mishnah, Rabbi Yezir had said that, um, Esfeshama would do chalitza. Uh, he changed his mind to say that Esfeshama does not do chalitza. Fine. You boil the asakasha. Mehei hodr. Oh no, I'm sorry. Sorry. Chazubor um, b'liezer. B'liezer changed his mind. Now the Gemara wants to know. You boil the mehei hodr be. Which? What did he change his mind by? Did he change his mind by the um, in our Mishnah? Right. Meaning uh, our Mishnah says that Esfeshama. Does do chalitza? The Brisa says that the Swiss Chama does not do chalitza, and we're saying that Rabbi Eliezer changed his mind. So did he change his mind from the Mishnah, or did he change his mind from the Brisa? So Tashma come here. The Tanya is the Brisa. Rabbi Eliezer says Rabbi Eliezer Swiss Chama, a fellow who's born a Saris, cholitz v'cholts in the Ishto. So he does chalitza, and they do. Uh, and if he dies, so then we do chalitza with his wife. She came b'minim misrapim b'alexandria from time because in Alexandria in Egypt, um. The, uh, people who were born a castrato could, could, could be healed. So therefore, uh, the Bryce is saying that because castratos could be healed if they were born that way, so they're allowed to do chalitza, and if they die, we do chalitza with their wife. So, apparently we have two Bryces, right? Well, one Mishnah and one Brysa, which purport that, uh, according to Rabbi Eliezer, um, a, uh, srischama does do chalitza, and we have one Bryce that says that according to Rabbi Yezer, Swiss Chama does not do Chalitza, so therefore, it must be that, that the actual opinion is that a Swiss Chama does do Chalitza, and the Brysa that says that a Swiss Chama does not do Chalitza, Rabbi Yezer changed his mind from that Brysa. Rabbi Yezer, Omer, Lolam Loha, Derbei, Bechit Tanana, Hila Onchin. Rabbi Yezer says actually, Rabbi Yezer never changed his mind at all. Our mission says that a Swiss Chama does do Chalitza, with that other Brysa, that says that based on Alexandria, Swiss Chama does do Chalitza. What about this Bryce in the middle where we say that Rabbi Lezer holds like Rabbi, like, like Beis Hillel by boys and Beis Shaman by girls? That's not talking about uh, Yibum. That's talking about Onchin, right? Punishment. At what point is a, is a, is a, um, boy gonna be Chayev for, 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 for Onishment, uh, Onchin? For example, he's Chayev Malkus. So at what point do we actually administer Malkus to a fellow? So Rabbi Lezer is saying, well, boys at 20, girls at 18. So, so that's what it has nothing to do with Yibum. That's Rabbi Lezer's opinion. Rabbi Lezer's opinion is that according to Rabbi Lezer, um, Sri's Chama does do Chalitza. And, um, that other Brisa which says that, uh, Sri's Chama, right, that at 20 is considered a Saurus, uh, and 18 for a girl. So that is only regarding punishments. That at that point, we can administer punishments to boys and girls. Uh, Itmar is interesting, you know. I'm feeling like really tired. Well, I'll tell you, Lemaise, I only slept four hours last night. Well, because, I'll tell you why. Because, um, last night was Saturday night. So, I slept eight hours on Friday night. So I figured, if I sleep eight hours on Friday night, I may as well sleep four hours on Saturday night. For the most part, 
I think it works. But I'll be honest, I'm a little tired. But let's go weiter. Um, fine. Idmar Ustaka stated, Ocho Chelev. All right, you have a fellow who eats Chelev. Uh, I think it's a Chiv Kars. Okay. Mi ben Shtem Esrei v'yom Echod. A ben Shmona Esrei. Okay. So now Rashi points out that he's talking about a Kastratala. A girl. A Kastratala. So we have um, uh, this girl. She eats Chelev, which is like forbidden fats. So mi ben Shtem Esrei v'yom Echod. Uh, from the time that she's 12 years old, I've been Shmona Esrei until 18 years old, right? Like Rabbi Yezir says that by girls, it's like Beishamai. Um, there we go, based on 18 years old. And she, and she's a Kastratala. Even if afterwards she, she has two Cyrus. Rav Omar, nice as Cyrus, Lemafrei, Ushmul Omar, Koin, Hoya, Baosa, Sha'a. Friends, do you understand what's going on? What's going on is the following. What's going on is, that you have this um, girl and comes 12 years old in a day, right? She's already bas mitzvah. And at some point over the next six years, she eats chelev. Now, she hasn't produced two pubic hairs. And now she turns 18 years old still, no two pubic hairs. So what does that mean? Memele, she's a kastratala. So the question is, how do we treat this interim period from when she was 12 until she's 18 Right? Do we say, you know, because let's say, for example, she would produce two pubic hairs at 15. So then we would say, okay, she's not a castratula. She's just uh, marching to the beat of her own drummer. And while most girls uh, reach puberty at 12, she reached puberty at 15. What do you want me to tell you? But um, she was a katana until that point, right? Until she produced two pubic hairs at the age of 15. Until that point, she was a katana. Now, when she produces those hairs... She becomes a gedola. Um, okay, but we're saying if she hits 18 and she has not produced two pubic hairs, so then she's a castratula. And even if she produces these two pubic hairs later, it's irrelevant, she's a castratula. Now, do we consider it that, well, then up until the age of 18, she's a katana? And at the age of 18, when she's established to be a castratula, at that point, we consider it to be, she's not a katana anymore, she's a gedola who's a castratula. Or do we say that, um, that um, no, at the age of 18, when she hasn't produced two pubic hairs, it becomes clear that she's a castratula, and already from the age of 12, she was a gedola, just a gedola who's a castratula. If she would produce two pubic hairs at the age of 15 or 16 or 17, whatever it is, so we'd say, okay, she marched to the beat of her own drummer, she was a katana for much longer than most. But... Maybe if when she becomes 18 and she doesn't have two pubic hairs, so maybe she's a castratula, we would say, okay, well then I guess the entire time she was already an adult. She was just a castratula. And that's why she didn't produce two pubic hairs, but she's already an adult from the age of 12. So that's the kasha. So, so let's read it again. So Itmar was taka stated, uh, So if uh, this girl eats chelev, which is a chiv of karis, from the time that she's 12 and a day, Adben Shmona Esrei, until the age of 18, Vinodubo Simone Saris, and it seems that she's a castratula, right? It's, uh, right, she's the, uh, age, she turns 18, she hasn't seen any pubic hairs yet. Ulachim kan evishte Cyrus, even if later she sees shte Cyrus, Rav Omar Naisis Saris and Lafayette. So Rav is of the opinion that, look, once she hits 18 years old and doesn't have two pubic hairs, so then already Mimela retroactively from the age of 12, she's already an adult, an adult who's a castratula. Ushmuel Omar caught in Hoya Baosa Shah, Whereas um, Shmuel says, no, she's a Kitana until the age of 18, at which point we establish her as a Kastratala, and at that point she's considered a uh, Gedola. But um, during that interim period, she was considered a Kitana, and therefore she would not be Chayev as for eating Chelev. Okay, fine. Maskif uh, Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef, Asakasha Lerav, Ailonis Lermeir, Yehei La Knas. Friends, you hear the Kasha? According to Rav, According to Rav, we say retroactively, she's a gedola from the age of 12. All right, right? So it comes the age of 18, no two pubic hairs. So the memela, she becomes a kastratula from the age of 12. Here's the shaila. When it comes to an uh, anuso mefuta, right? a girl who is uh, raped or seduced, so then the uh, rapist or the seducist, um, uh, well, the rapist in every case, or the seducist, uh, if he doesn't marry her, Needs to pay 50 silver coins to the father. Right? Definitely in the case of rape. I don't know if it's also 50 silver coins by seduction. 
But um, says, uh, says, says, says her mayor that by a kestradala, so there's no 50 silver coins. Because um, um, the 50 silver coins is only for a Nara. Right? It's, only, it's only for a, a girl who's a Nara. And a kestradala goes straight from being a Kitana to being a Gedola. And therefore the question is, that makes sense according to Shmuel, who says, so as I can understand Rameir's opinion according to Shmuel, who says that she's a Kitana until the age of 18 when it's established that she's a Kestradala. And then she becomes a Gedola immediately. There's no point when she's a Naira. And therefore, um, there is no uh, 50 silver coins by a Kestradala because she's never a Naira. Now, according to Rav, however, Rav Yosef asks, that according to Rav, however, um, we're going back, right, when she turns 18 and she doesn't have two pubic cares, then we go back retroactively and say already from the age of 12, she's an adult. And what we want to assume is, you know, the general assumption is that the way it works is she's a katana until the, in general, she's a katana until the age of 12. At the age of 12, she becomes a na'ara until the age of 12 and a half, at which point she then becomes an adult, a bogaris. So what we want to assume is that if we're saying according to Rav, you go back in time to the age of 12, so what happens at the age of 12? She becomes a Na'ara for half a year. And then a Bulgaris, you know, at the age of 12 and a half. And therefore, according to Rav, then a Kestradala, already from the age, retroactively from the age of 12, uh, from the age of 12, she should be a Na'ara. And if she's a Na'ara at that point, then shouldn't Rav Meir say that if, uh, she was raised, raped or seduced at that point during the age of 12 and 12 and a half she should uh, her father should be able to get 50 silver coins because she's an ara so therefore I don't understand her mayor's opinion who says that the father of a um, of a kastradala does not get 50 silver coins but according to Rav that at the age of 18 we then go back retroactively to say that she's an adult from the age of 12 so then shouldn't she become a nara at the age of 12 in which case um, if she's, uh, you know, it's possible that if she's raped or seduced at that point, so then her father would get 50, 50 silver coins. So, so that, so that, so that's of Yosef's kasha. Right? So I'm asking for Rav Yosef. So Rav Yosef asks, the Rav, according to Rav, who says that at the age of 18, we then go back retroactively to the age of 12 and say that she's a adult kastradala from the age of 12. I loan us the Rav Meir, Yehei Knas. Well, then I would imagine that if at that point, between the age of 12 and 12 and a half, She's raped or seduced, so and her father should get 50 silver coins. How come Rav says that a Kishadala, her father never gets 50 silver coins? So Omar Le'abai, so Abai says to Rav Yosef, Mikat Nusa Yotzusa Leveger. He says Abai to Rav Yosef, no. Even according to Rav, he says that when the, she reaches the age of 18, and she doesn't have two pubic hairs, so then it's established that, that she's a Kishadala retroactively, it means that at the age of 12, she uh, becomes an adult, meaning up until the age of 12, she is a katana. From the age of 12, she becomes an adult kastradala. There's never any uh, point in which she is a na'ara. Omerle, Rav Yosef responds to Abai, Kol kiane mile ma'al yisa yisamu mishmi, if mishmai, if only they would say such amazing uh, things in my name, right? Meaning, he basically says, Abai, that's exactly correct. Right, if only they would say such great things in my name. The Tanya, as we learn in the Bryce, in Asaurus, Nidun, Kiven, Sora, Umore, that Tukatam would have been Sora, Umore, is uh, Nudnik. A nudnik, it's a whole thing. We're going to learn about him, Sech, the Sanhedrin. Basically, if a kid is being a Nudnik, well, he, he's in big trouble. But uh, there's an opinion that says that Ben Sora, Umore never happened. It's a very specific case. Very, very specific case. So, um, a, a, a Kestrado cannot be a Ben Sora, Umore. Because a Ben Sora Umore needs to have a gesunte pubic mane of pubic hair. Um, and Kestrado uh, doesn't have that. Ve'ein Ailonis Nidonis Kinairim Arosa Shemikat Nusuyot Sodaveger. And additionally, a Kestradala does not become a Nara Ame Orosa. Because she is never a Nara. She's never a Nara. She just goes from being a Kitano to being a Bo Garris. Alright. Very nice.
Omer of Abos is Abos Simoni, Saris, Vailonus, Ven Shmone, and Osin Boen Maise, Aichu Ben Esum. So it says Abbo that when it comes to a castrato, when it comes to a castratula, and when it comes to a child who's born in the eighth month, right? The assumption is that a child born in the eighth month of pregnancy uh, will not uh, live. And we're saying that in all three of these cases, a castrato, a castratula, and a child born in the eighth month, we only establish them to be a castrato, a castratula, or a baby born in the eighth month at the age of 20. Or I guess in the case, in the case of, um, the, uh, baby born in the eighth month, only at the age of 20 do we establish that, that, um, they actually are, that, that, that the child actually is not, is, is viable. Right? Once, once a child has lived 20 years, so then we can determine that they, you know, it's a viable child, and, and I guess, Mimela, the child was not born in the eighth month. Let's go weiter. I don't understand. How could it be that a child born in the eighth month could, could live until the age of 20? A child born in the eighth month won't live. That a child born in the eighth month, um, in the eighth month, uh, the mother's pregnant for eight months, you know, in the eighth month of pregnancy, the child is born. Uh, he's basically like a stone. He's, he's Muksan Chavis. A baby born in the eighth month is Muksan Chavis. He's like a stone. He's not going to live. But nonetheless, if his mother wants to nurse her, she could uh, lean over, bend over the baby, and uh, you know, with basically nurse the baby without picking the baby up because the baby is muktzah. Because the assumption is that the baby is not viable. Here, what are we talking about? Well, there are signs. What is what's a? How do we know that we have a baby who's in born in the eighth month? Um, well, if it didn't, uh, you know, uh, wasn't uh, inside of the mother for the requisite amount of months, Rabbi Omer says, Rabbi Simonov, Simonov Mochich and Olav, that you can tell if it's a baby born in the eighth month based on um, its development, Syro Vitsiponov, Shelo Gamu. Basically, if his hair and his fingernails have not um, 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 sufficiently developed, so then that means that. Um, that it will not uh, live. Time of the logamu algamu aminon hai barzainu vishtahuye hu de ishtoi. But if the baby does have um, uh, fingernails and does have hair, so even if it was born in the eighth month, so we say, you know what? It's actually a baby born in the seventh month, or that was ready to be born in the seventh month, but just kind of was an enjoy. The baby was enjoying it inside the mother. I guess. Uh, I don't know, whatever it is, the baby was having a good time, didn't want to come out, um, and, and therefore it's really a seventh month baby, because the assumption is a baby born in the seventh month will live, a baby born in the ninth month, of course, will live, but a baby born in the eighth month will not live. Um, but we say that if a baby born in the eighth month already is developed and has fingernails and hair, so then really it must be a baby that was already ready to be born in the seventh month, but, um, was, but just was kind of hanging out for a little bit. All right. Fine. Um, okay. So, so we had said that a baby born in the eighth month, you know, you wait until 20 years old. And if at 20 years old, the baby is still uh, doing its thing. So then I guess Mimele was not a baby actually born in the eighth month. But we can only be sure I guess, at 20 years old. But let me ask you a kasha. There was a story with Ravato Sva. There was a, uh, right, there was a situation. They had a woman. Her husband went to travel somewhere. The and was away for twelve months, and and then she gave birth after twelve months. You hear that? That her husband went away twelve for twelve months. She wasn't back home. He wasn't back home, and she gave a birth birth to, to to a baby twelve months later. So the question is, what's the deal? You know, if he was away for twelve months, how could she be having a baby twelve months later? Are babies born, right? Meaning if it came from her husband, so that means that the baby was uh, being developed for 12 months. Is that really a possibility? Or are we saying that she had a relationship with somebody else during that time and it's somebody else's baby and it's a mom's? And the and Rav Tosva said, it's no problem. The baby is not a mom's or we assume that the baby came from the husband. Come on, Kirebi. Dami Mishtaha. What, is that like Rebbe who says that it's just a baby that's been waiting, in this case, for another three months, right? Meaning, 
Rebbe said that, um, well, if the baby is fully developed, then so we can assume that it was already ready to be born when, you know, at an appropriate time and it just was kind of hanging out. But that's a single opinion. It's only the opinion of Rebbe. How could Rav Tosva say that in this case with this woman whose husband was away for 12 months? So we'll say that the baby was from her husband because it was just kind of hanging out inside of her for an additional three months. But that would only be the opinion of Rebbe. Don't the rabbis argue on Rebbe? How can he pass in like a das yochid? So came the Ika. So says the Gemara, well, apparently Rebbe's father also, Rebbe Shimon Gamliel, also holds that um, a baby could hang out for a little bit even, if it, even after it's technically ready to come out. The Tanis, we learn in the price of Rebbe Shimon Gamliel Omer, says Rebbe Shimon Gamliel, that if you have a baby who lives for 30 days, then already it's not considered a nafel. Um, so even if you have a baby that was born in the eighth month, but if it lived for 30 days, so then um it would be considered um you know a baby that was really ready to come out in the seventh month and just was kind of hanging out for a bit so therefore Rav Tosva was actually poskening like both uh, not not just like a singular opinion but like Rebbe as well as Rav Shimon ben Gamliel. Taner Abonon, the rabbis taught Ezus Tris Chama, well who's considered a castrato a, a, a castrato from birth. Kolshu ben Esim v'loivish Tesiris. If you have a fellow who's twenty years old. And still does not have two pubic hairs. Even if afterwards he produced two pubic hairs, he's, he's already considered a castrato because he reached the age of 20 and did not produce two pubic hairs. And these are the signs of a castrato. If he doesn't have a bard, doesn't have a beard, and his hair is very soft. Sorry, Machlik, and his skin is very soft and he's not hairy. Oh, if his pish doesn't uh, uh, foam, his pish doesn't foam. Or when he pees, it doesn't make an arc. Pees, it doesn't make an arc. So he's a castrato. Those who say, or if his uh, semen is like water. Alright. Or if his urine doesn't uh, um, 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 uh, ferment. Fermented urine. Oh, that must be a remedy for something. Those who say, or Acherim say, If a fellow bathes in the winter, and his skin does not produce uh, steam. Reb Shimon ben Elazar Omer calls you call a lockway if he's got a very thin voice. Ben Nikur ben Ish Leisha. It's not clear if he's a boy or a girl. Vezui Ilonis. What's who's considered a kishtradala? Koshi bas esim v'loevi beis Cyrus. Well, if she's twenty years old and has not yet produced two pubic hairs, vafilu evil achimikan. Even if she produces two pubic hairs later, Reu ka Ilonis chodvarel. She's considered a. Kestradala, Beidu and Simonel. These are the signs of a Kestradala. Kol she'ein lo dadim, if she doesn't have breasts, umiskashe b'shas tashmish, and it is painful for her when she is cohabiting, cohabiting or cohabitating, cohabiting, cohabiting. Maise. Nei b'shem v'gamlil omer, kol she'ein lo shipule me'ayim kinoshim, if she does not have a protruded lower abdomen, like women, if she has a deep voice, then he carries me initially ish, and the voice is not uh, discernible if it is that of a boy or of a girl. Itmar was stated, Simoni Saris, the sign when it comes to the signs of a castrato, Ravuna Omar Achi Ukulum. Ravuna says you have to have all of the signs. Rabbi Yechon Omar, I feel a bechad man. Rabbi Yechon says even just one of the signs would make a fellow a castrato. Al Kishrado. Echadevi Shte Cyrus Bizokon. Now, if the fellow has two hairs in his beard, well, at that point, Kuliam uh, Lapligid Da'ad Yu Kulan. Well, if he has even just two hairs in his beard, well, then it's already an indication that he's not a Kishrado. And he would only be determined to be a Kishrado if all of the remaining signs existed. But if, you know, even one is missing, since he has two hairs in his beard, so then he's not a Kishrado. The machloka is between Rav Huna and Rav Yochanan is when he does not have any hair in his beard. In that case, um, 
In that case, if he doesn't have any hair in his beard, so Nufuna says that you would have to have all of the remaining signs in order to be a Kishtrado. Uh, Rav, Rav Yochanan says even if he just had one of the signs, he would be considered a Kishtrado. Eloha de Omeluhu Rav Baravu le Rabbonin. Rather that which Rav Baravu said to the rabbis, Ainu baby Rav Nachman, take a look at Rav Nachman, check out Rav Nachman, Ibiso, Maile Hevel, Esiv Le Bras. If his, um, 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 if he produces steam in the winter after bathing, so then I'll marry my daughter to him. Super interesting. I guess, um, um, Rav Baravu had a Habamina. That maybe Rav Nachman was a Kishtrado. That's super interesting. So, anyways, come on, Kravuna. That sounds like it's like Ravuna, right? That he's saying that right, Ravuna said that in order to be considered a Kishtrado, you'd have to have all of the signs of being a Kishtrado. And therefore, Rabba Ravuna is saying, look, check out Rav Nachman. If he's got even, you know, one sign of, uh, you know, not being a Kishtrado, right? If he has steam when he comes out of the bath, so then he's not a Kishtrado and I'll marry him to my daughter. All right. So it sounds like it's Ravuna. Lo, uh, Rav Nachman Sichi Dikna Havile. No, Rav Nachman actually had um, a patchy beard. Therefore, since he had a patchy beard, so then Mimela, that's already uh, everyone would agree that uh, even if he just has one other, you know, one indication that he's not a Kishtrado, so then he would not be a Kishtrado. So between Rav Nachman's patchy beard and his steam that he produces after the uh, the bath in the winter, so Rav Bar Rav was willing. To assume that uh, Rav Nachman was not a Kishtrado and that uh, he can marry uh, his daughter. Although Rav Nachman, I think, married the daughter of the Reish Galusa, I think. Uh, all right. All right, the Mishnah had continued. Um, the Mishnah had said that a Kishtrado does not do Chalitza or Yibum, and so too a Kishtradala. Katani Sari is doing the Ailonis, so we're saying that it's like a Kishtrado, similar to Kishtradala. My Ilonis be the Shemaim, just like a Kishtradala is, you know, from birth. Av Saris be the Shemaim, also the Saris that we're talking about, who does not do Yibm or Chalitza, is a Kishtradala from birth. The stomach Rabbi Akiva, which is basically like Rabbi Akiva, Dabim be the Adam in be the Shemaim Lo, who says that a Kishtradala from birth, uh, does not do Yibm or Chalitza, but a Kishtradala after the fact does do Yibm or Chalitza since he had a uh, period where he was kosher. Friends, that was Daf, uh, um, um, uh, Pei, Daf 80. Of Mesechti Yivamis. At the first part of the daf, we discussed the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer, who says that a Kishtrado from birth is able to do Yibim and Chalitza. We brought a Raisa which says that maybe they're not able to do Yibim or Chalitza. Um, we saw Machlokas between uh, Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai about at what point um, is a, is like the cutoff for becoming a Kishtrado or a Kishtradala. Beis Hillel says 20, Beis Shammai says 18. Rabbi Eliezer says it's for boys 20, for girls 18. Um, we had two opinions, right? One was that Rabbi Yezer changed his mind from one of the opinions. The other one was that, no, Rabbi is just saying that when it comes to 18 or 20, he's talking about in terms of onshin, at which point uh, can they be high of onshin. We saw it, right, like Malkus and things like that. Chorus, we saw by Chalib. Um, then we saw Machlokas between Rav and Shmuel about if you have a uh, Kishtrado or a Kishtradala that at the age of, uh, specifically we're talking about a Kishtradala, but I imagine it will be the same thing for a Kishtrado, that if they reach uh, the age of 18 or 20, and uh, it's established that they're a Kishtrado or a Kishtradala, respectively. So does that mean that from the age of 12, when they were Bar or Bas Mitzvah, well, Bas Mitzvah at 12, Bar Mitzvah at 13, that from that point they're already considered an adult, or is it, no, they were considered a minor until the point at 18 or 20 when they were determined to be a Kishtrado or a Kishtradala, that at that point they uh, become an adult. So Rob says we go retroactive. Shmuel says that we just do it from that time and on. And then we discussed different signs of how to be a Kishtrado or a Kishtradala. Uh, Rafuna said you have to have all of the signs. Rabbi Yochanan said even one sign would suffice. Peace out, friends.